Okay, so <laughs> can you believe this is the final episode of the aftermath already? Yeah, it's like yeah, it feels like it feels like we only started like a week ago. Yeah, it's like it's been amazing though. It's been so much fun, and I can't wait oh, to yeah. announce what we're announcing soon mm. to everybody. So keep everybody on their toes. But anyway, first off, what did you think of this episode? I'd say that um, uh, if it's if it's one thing I've seen that. Even though I've seen like some kind of mixed feelings about the episode, like just like on the timeline, Twitter it seems like one thing I'm really, really proud to see, and I definitely agree with is um, seeing like all the love for Peyton Reed's directing. Yeah. Of, like after this episode, and like because it's, it's like as as someone who like really, really, really loved Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp, and like they're often kind of looked down upon a little bit as like and like I I feel like a lot of the time it's just due to like like what they go up against. Like it's always like there's an Avengers movie and that's amazing. And then the next one after that is Ant-Man or something. And it's yeah. like, it's like, it, it doesn't feel like it lives up to the rest of them. And it's like, it feels like, so like sort of small and inconsequential, like comparison, but that's kind of what it's supposed to be like. But then I've, I always really love those films. And I always loved Peyton's directing of them. And so like getting to see like the, the vindication of like seeing when his episodes of the Mandalorian and how much everybody loves those things. Yes. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, that's he cool. did. He did a wonderful job, and yeah, as well, like, with me, because, again, I'm based on Tumblr more than Twitter, but, like, I saw everyone before the episode was like, why are they giving him the episode? He did such a crap job in episode two, and I was like, do you guys know who you're talking about? <laughs> I was like, yeah. he, he does Marvel. He knows what he's doing. Um, and he did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed this episode, and just, um, like, I know this, obviously, again, I've said this before, like, communication with the cinematographer and stuff, but the cinematography in this episode yeah. it felt like i was watching a movie and i was like oh definitely it's just so much joy throughout the whole thing and just i had i wrote down four shots that stuck with me and i still like think about um the first one is berber and din side by side in the cantina in the oh yeah yeah That's so like, good like... really good shot so simple but it's like i get it mm. um and then the second one is gideon and din was clashing and well, just that whole scene was amazing. Fighting just in that hallway and the camera's just moving back. And again, Rogue One feels, everyone was saying that too. Just, oh, so good. And then the last one is Din holding Baby Yoda. It's just like that shot is just so pretty. And just, yeah, <laughs> just this whole episode really like just all department shined. And just like, it just shows like what a TV show can do. <laughs> I think like I was, I'm, 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 I still haven't got out, got over how brilliant the all of the the dark trooper sequences was. Like all that, like just same the bit when they were, just when they were activating, when like the cooling systems going down. All the like that was just so beautifully fantastic, shot. Like, super, really good simple sequence. You know, it's so simple in like what it is in the plot, but it's just like it's just beautifully done and like reminded yeah. me of like um, I mean like. The whole thing, everything about the Dark Troopers has been like sort of really giving me like sort of Iron Man one and two flashbacks, and like it just reminded me of like the suit up sequence from Iron Man three of like the first one, like when he's sort of like, you know, yes. just like that kind of like just seeing all these like awesome shots of like it's just so beautifully done, and so also, they good, absolutely phenomenal, so good, and like, even with um Ludwig did yeah. an incredible job with music. I love, and this oh, I was gonna bring yeah. it up, but just yeah. like the and this is what I love when video games movies or tv shows do this they mix like like the sounds around them into the music so then when it started doing i was like yes this is what i'm here for and just so good throughout the entire episode the music it's just on point and it just like brought that level of tension just higher and you're just sitting there like oh god what's gonna happen next it just heightens and just so so good i like my planner vfx artists like sort of like freak out a little bit go for it because i was going to bring it up too go for it unbelievably good like yeah because like i mean i remember i remember thinking like um like let's say K- k2so in mm. um in um in uh, uh rogue one he yes. looked amazing he's like always looked really really good and also um a really interesting thing i remember learning about him he was um fully rendered in the unreal engine they had to have used like they had had to have had some stunt guys on set with like oh definitely i think so and, like some of the shoulders real yeah because it just looks so good there's bits where like it's like there's one or two shots where like you see one of them in the foreground and then there's another one we see more of its full body in the background i'm thinking like 
the one in the background is probably digital the one in the front is real but like you because you're looking at all of them at once and they all look absolutely flawless you can't tell which ones Ex are yeah exactly and which ones are completely digital yeah and like yeah i was just i was just in awe of the dark troopers they oh, look so and good. just it's like the yeah the show has always been amazing but yeah this is a whole nother level definitely and even like i remember someone i think it was the episode that grogu got taken they were like oh i'm so disappointed like we're probably not going to see the dark troopers again i was like dude we have three more at that point and oh no two more episodes yeah. like we're building to it it's going to come up yeah. again and just from the get-go it's like that tension you get you know they're going to be hard to beat and i love how like like even with their movements like you obviously they obviously said they're not human but like I love like that roboticness to it. Like it wasn't like perfect. Like there was a little bit of awkwardness in their movements. I was like, I felt like that made it more terrifying because it was like, they they won't hold back. It's just like, they're robots. They don't care who you are. They don't care if you have feelings or anything. They'll just destroy you. And just like, they were horrifying, especially when like they breached the doors. Oh, that scene yeah, was know. just, and that's another scene that was iconic, but just like terrifying, like no expression, oh, yeah. no nothing, but it's just, you hear the screeching and just, oh, oh so good, but so terrifying. Like the, bit, the bit when he had, when he held Din up against the wall and starts just like hammering away at the helmet. It's like, I was like, I was thinking, oh my God, what's going to happen? Like, is the... Dude. I was thinking that the glass was going to break. Same! Like, Dude, I, thought, I had to like... cut that out of my reaction because I, it, my mic blew. I was screaming at the top of my lungs and just like, I was like, oh no, something bad is going to really happen. So like, yeah, it was just, that was terrifying. But thank God Beska really yeah. holds up. <laughs> so the, th the one thing I was thinking of though, like just about that sequence, I thought, uh, he must have some pretty awesome padding in that helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Din, I mean, not Pedro, but like, it's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, it's like, yeah, the front of it's being hit, and that's just like hitting the back of it. it's all one solid yeah. piece. It's not like bouncing back and hitting him in the nose. Or anything. Oh. Like, oh, man, it's like keeping rattling, <laughs> rattling around in the back. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, oh, just imagine that hitting your face. God damn, I'd just be like screaming at the top of my lungs. But yeah. <laughs> So there's one thing I um I wanted to mention. Another thing, speaking about um the effects work and like, mm -hmm. sort of blending the practical and digital as they do so brilliantly in the show. Um, I learned recently that um, uh, Gideon's cruiser was a model, like the <gasps> whole time. Really? No. The point. They were like, yeah, the whole thing was a model. Any of the wide shots of it, it's like probably would have been a pretty big one because like they had oh, some yeah. close ups. I know that like with the um in the original trilogy, I think they said that. For a new hope, they had like a like a two foot long star destroyer. They used like all the wide shots. But then in Empire, when they're in close up on a lot on um, on them a lot more, they had like a like a three meter long one. Yeah, and I'm thinking there was probably the same with Gideon's ship. And then, but yeah, so this is gonna turn into just a VFX discussion episode. If I <laughs> <guess>. <laughs> but yeah, but, well, yeah, I mean we could talk like, about it like forever if we could. I want to talk about Bo. Bar. She's Bar. back. Bo is yes. Brilliant. It's sort of like I mean like from this from uh just from the first from the start of the season like we kind of figured all right uh, like with season one there's going to be like we're gonna have like all the different friends that din meets through the season and like some of them are going to come back for yeah. like the final episode he's going to get a posse together for something and you know lots of wondering of like okay who's going to come back who's it going to be and i'm glad that yeah out of as much as i would have liked cobb to come back I'm glad yeah that, like, that like, would have been we cool got, we got we got Bo and tosca yeah because they're both awesome Shit, yeah they're um, awesome <laughs> Do you know what happened to the other dude? I know. I was like, where did he go? So anyway, <laughs> I'm just I'm just picturing he was probably like he was probably like um, um at the bar. There was probably like just one other shot. He just walks in. Okay, so like, <laughs> like two drinks and has like. Whoa. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna also say I love that moment where Boba and like um, Bogotan have that moment. I was like, oh damn, like. Especially just because, like, I felt really bad for Boba because, like, we were obviously speaking about him this yeah. whole season, saying, like, you know, like, he like he has this, like, middle ground. Like, he's, a, like, you know, he looks like a clone, but he's also a Mandalorian. So it's, like, he's, like, in the middle, and he doesn't really accept either one. So, like, to see that be brought up, I was like, oh, my God, thank God. Because, you know, obviously it was yeah. briefly mentioned last episode, which I didn't pick up. You told me. Um, and then, you know, there wasn't really much about it. So then in this episode, I was like, Oh, nice! But then at the same time, I was like, no, don't hurt Boba. <laughs> Just because I felt really bad for him. I think it's interesting as well, so, like, um, getting to see, like, 
I like that with Bo in the show, she's been like a little bit more of a, I don't want to say anti-hero, but like they've sort of, she's got a little bit more kind of like morally gray kind of territory compared mm. to Din. Like she has, we established that she has, she very much has her own goals, her own wants and needs and desires and they're yeah. kind of, they're a little different with Din's. They line up every now and then, but she's not necessarily like 100% a good guy. She was a villain when she first turned up in the, exactly. in the Clone Wars. You know? Yeah, and like, and then through Rebels and through season seven of the Clone Wars, she's kind of very much been just an ally. Yeah, but I like that they portrayed her as like sort of she's just a little bit more of a kind of she's got her own things yeah. to do, and like they she's ha- she's up hardened up and she has a lot more grit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I saw there was the one th- there was the one thing I saw um like it kind of it threw me a little bit in the episode when it happened, and I oh. saw like some people were like theorizing a thing about it and it's like oh, okay yeah i kind of get that of like the saying how the whole thing of din having the dark saber and then gideon saying how like you know if she wants it she's gonna have to like properly, yes! like you know fight you to get it back she can't just give it to um to mm. her I'm saying that but but in rebels sabine just gave it to her and oh saying yeah how, like it's sort of like kind it seems to like it's like for me it seemed like a little bit like a sort of does that really make sense in the story? Yeah. Is that just like creating conflict just for the sake of creating conflict? But yeah. I did see one theory someone had of that maybe Bo feels like she didn't actually earn the Darksaber mm. at any point, and that's why her rule of Mandalore fell apart. Uh, feels that's, like it's not, that's a good like way to look at it. Then. Yeah. And so she feels like, if I want it to work this time, I'm going to have to like just like do everything by the book, by the code, and by tradition, I'm going to have to fight whoever owns the yeah. Darksaber in single combat and win it off them. Yeah. And then I will have actually won. Mm. The, um, and I think even life. for her personally as a warrior, I think she just wants that sort of like, I can gain it back with yeah. my like my own like like skills and stuff. So like I think like that's what she wants. And I, I hope we see that more like like I guess like her morals and stuff next season um and i guess like how that's all gonna work out next season as well with din like din does not want to be king and we've said this like amazing as it was to see him with the dark saber in his hand because i didn't realize he'd have activated and holding it that was a cool moment but he would never want to be king so it'll be interesting to see like like what he thinks about it and like if he finds out more about because i was going to say i was gonna leave this for the review so i'll just only briefly touch upon it but like i'm excited to see if they like allow him to like like research and find more out about his culture maybe where his parents are from what his parents believed in etc um but yeah we'll talk about that in the review because i'll leave the theories for that yeah we can talk about like all of our season three predictions yeah yeah, yeah. in that in the review um so um all right i figure we may as well like well let's get to it now and we should talk about the big the big one with our find the we finally know <laughs> who it was that Grogu had reached out to I yes it. i mean like plenty of people called it but it's like yeah. this thing you're like yeah it's just like just logically yeah all right who is it that would be around trying to think about exactly like, yeah who's, yeah like what's just... this youngling oh here all right luke's return i have like i was you should I have like all of the different times that like i have thought Ah, oh, I wish I had a, had a camera recording. Like, Dude, you know, like our I was to gonna it. ask you guys That's to just put a camera on just for this episode, I know, but I forgot. Yeah. Like, yeah, the lone X one comes along, and then I think one of us said, "He's like, oh, the." I- Yo, it's the resistance. Oh, I, New Republic. Did you I'm actually like, think it was the resistance straight away? Oh, that's like, yeah, that's like, yeah, first up, let's was just thought, like, oh, yeah, cool, the resistance here. It's going to be Trapper and Carson and everybody. And then, like, uh, yeah. oh, wait a minute, it's just one. And then, like, oh, it's a Luke. And then we're like, wait, wait, wait is, it, is it Luke? Is it Luke? And then, like, first shot of when we see him, like, in the ropes, like, yes! <laughs> just, like, <laughs> yes. Oh, dude, just that moment. Like, I, like, even with the black and white, I didn't get too excited because I was like, yeah. it might not be Luke. It might yeah. just be someone on an X Wing. And then yeah. when you see the green lightsaber, it's yeah. like, yeah, that's like, Luke. <laughs> that has to be Luke, but no one else. So, oh, just like even talking about it now, it gets me like so know, like excited yeah. because it's like everyone's waited for more Luke, especially at the height of his power because we never saw it. Mm. And just, uh, dude, oh, just seeing him, mm. like, oh, my heart. It's just like, oh, it's so full. Because <laughs> I, 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 I've, I, I've been talking about it on on, on Twitter of like. And then they're like, 
couple little kind of, I wouldn't say arguments, more like just kind of like it seemed like seeing like some of the sort of disagreements about mm. it of like I'm I'm kind of just a little bit mixed on mm -hmm. the whole thing. I was absolutely in love with like all of like from like the X-Wing arriving to to Luke up until Luke entering the room it's like and if I would personally say it might just be like the might just be like because I'm someone who's like learned a lot about these sort of things and like I can spot the kind of like the the cracks and seams and a little more the face replacement was just like a little bit uh, and like yeah it, it was a little like, off yeah it wasn't perfect because I'd say that um because I think like as 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 someone that'll defend Rogue One to the end of my days, yeah, I'd say that I will definitely. I would be the first to say that Tarkin and Leia both looked a little bit funny, mm, but that was yeah. like his sort of just having the sort of just like very flat directional lighting, just like straight on him. It didn't do any. It didn't do yeah, any favors. It didn't really help. Yeah, and so that's kind of. But I, th that's one thing that it's so sort of like it warmed me to. Like I, I sort of. I stopped being a little so harsh on the on the effects. I'm thinking, oh wow, that it was it was actually a deep fake. I didn't think because deep fakes, I always think like they can look pretty good, but they don't look as good as like a full yeah, like full face digital face, yeah. And so I'm actually impressed that they managed to get one to look that good. Cause yeah, really good. And, because I think like no matter yeah. what, I think just the effort of yeah. bringing Luke in and yeah. actually because like everyone was like Sebastian Stan, like they're gonna get him in no matter yeah. what. But then the fact that they went to the effort. Of actually trying to make someone look like Luke, mm. like I appreciate that so much, mm. and yeah. yeah, that's just like kudos to them for doing like the best job that they could do. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, that's, mm, that's true. Yeah, because I'd say that um, I was one of the ones that like because kind of like I was a little disappointed. Well, Mitch and I were both a little disappointment yeah. disappointed that it wasn't Sebastian's because like we've been like, yeah, because so even like, even me that. like like yeah. afterwards I was like, like it would have been cool with Sebastian yeah. too, but. I, like, but then, um, and I've I've seen some people like on on Twitter like sort of they're like talking about like it's like how much they they really really loved how mm -hmm. um Luke's role in this and like how he was uh, how he appeared how he's visualized. But then like saying that as like trying to like just like throw a little shade at like any of the people that are fan casting Sebastian. And I was like, oh, I, t I don't really, I don't think that's right. It's like you can. You can like it, but don't talk down about like yeah, like the don't because, talk like, down about people fan yeah. casting people because it's just yeah. their opinion. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I feel like I feel like recasting roles um very often gets quite a bit more flack than it should because mm. there's so many times that it's been done brilliantly that I think oh people, yeah definitely people forget how good a really really good fan um recast can be of like people saying the thing about yeah Mark is and always will be Luke he's the only Luke and like saying that it's like yeah but like. Yeah, that that's true. Oh yeah, You're like that's always going to be true. Else could do, yeah, you know? exactly. Because like, I mean, because think about it, if like that mindset was applied to everything, you never would have gotten Ewan as Obi Wan. We never exactly. Would have gotten, and like, it's but yeah. So I feel like one thing I will say is that I reckon this is probably like one thing that's all like really that we really seen about in this episode and of Luke uh, Luke's role in it is that yeah, I think this is very much kind of a one-off sort of situation. Because, yeah. like, using, like, body doubles and digital face replacements and so on, it's like, that in no way would be sustainable if they wanted to have a lot of... No way. ...anything. No. Nah. And so, having, a, like, biting the bullet and ha saying, and recasting, having a new actor in the role and saying, this is our, like, our own sort of, like, slightly different interpretation of the character, as it did with Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, for instance. Exactly. It's sort of, like, that's a way that works for when you're going to do it in, like, a more... Like, long-term. Yeah. yeah, a long-term kind of thing. The big thing in the end is like um, performance over like the it needs to be like everything needs to work to like get the performance to be best. And I think that's mm. the one thing that I and a few others kind of didn't really like about Luke up until of like up once the once the hood was off is like it wasn't mm. really a performance per se. He was so like mm. just a little bit wooden. And like I feel like yeah, because like. I know lots of people love. I loved R two. Like I love like it's like yeah, it's like a fantastic moment that was like really really sweet and really yeah. beautiful. But I feel like he was sort of there just like as a bit of a crutch of like we want to have someone like emoting and like reacting to mm. to Grogu, and we can't have Luke doing that because like yeah that's, like, because not yeah same. and like yeah. you said like if yeah. he had done too much with his face, yeah. that would have given away that it was like completely fake. From what I understand, but um, mm -hmm. with his voice, that really sort of like that's something that like sort of really threw me quite a bit. I was like, I was thinking, okay, is that 
is that Matt Mercer doing the voice? I thought it was Matt for a little bit Matt! because like he does the voice really, really well. Yes, he he's nailed Battle it. If you get around to playing Battlefront Two at one point, Matt as Luke in that is just absolutely. Fantastic. I've heard little bits of it, and yeah. he sounds really he's, good. He's so I was good. surprised. I am like, but then I was thinking. Okay, did they get someone like just like really, really good at like doing, at doing like Luke's voice to just mm. do this? And then I saw there's some people saying that it was Mark doing the voice. I think, ah, uh, as like, and then but I, I feel saw, like yeah. I I wasn't sure because Mark's voice now is yeah. gruff. And yeah. yes, he's an amazing voice actor. Don't get me wrong, he's fantastic. Yeah. Don't mm. come at me. Um, but yeah. I just don't think he could redo young Luke. Yeah, they'll yeah. take that into note now yeah, yeah, because definitely. especially with dave and john at the helm yeah. they will take notes from the fans and they'll be like okay let's do it better next time yeah. but again i just the effort that went into doing it i was just like thank you because yeah. and i didn't say this in well i did kind of say this in my reaction i was in tears when i said it which probably no one could understand me but just like i haven't felt this happy and just this excited about star wars in a very long time mm. like just because of the sequel trilogy and stuff and i was just like yeah it's up in the air i don't know really know what's going on anymore um but with this it just brought that sense of hope like that enjoyment back into it that ex childlike giddiness that i've always like loved about star wars and just that's why like this whole episode i was just like i'm in love i just like i feel like i'm being thrown back into like my childhood or even just like at least two years ago and just like i'm i'm happy and i'm excited and i'm excited to see what else they do because yeah it's the doors are wide open now oh, so yeah yeah like com compared to the last season we've got no idea where we're going oh, i mean like, like it's, it's the one thing i would say of the um so yeah love the episode love the season loved so much of it but it's like i do feel like i didn't it felt kind of weird as an ending it episode. did it, it ending, felt like, almost yeah. final yeah, it's like oh, it's it's almost the opposite of that to me. I would say oh, really? it felt like when we when when Luke goes into the lift with Grogu and we cut to black, it's like I thought wait 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 a minute, there's got to be like another scene, right? Because mm. like we've just like there's like so many things that happened and then that's Luke true. Came along and it's like and then we had like sort of Grogu ending, but like it's mm. sort of it's like and yeah, I, I don't mean to don't mean to trash the episode as um no, all, you're not, but it's like you're not at all. It's like I remember um. One of the first things I thought of is like it felt a little bit like if you remember in Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger mm -hmm. Tides when like there's the big bit towards the end where like they've arrived at where the Fountain of Youth is and there's uh, Jack's yeah. pirates, there's Barbosa's um, privateers, and then there's Blackbeard's pirates. They're all there. They're all facing off. They've built up like all this big so like conflict between all three of them, and then the Spaniards turn up and destroy the, fount the Fountain of Youth, and then they just leave. And it had a little bit of feel of like it's like it's like if it was that, but if they then just like ended right there when they leave, it's like there's still yeah. all this conflict here of like we've got Bo's just been shot point blank about twelve times. I didn't actually, yeah, I, I missed it in the episode, but she. Did I didn't realize that was her either until yeah. like yeah. I went back and watched. It. I was like, oh shit, that yeah. was Bo. Like it, it just it just felt kind of weird as an ending. I, I think like it might have been like, rushed. Yeah, it yeah yeah, and it's like I get that. The, I I think I get that they were trying to. Oh, my mom's loading Milo, Milo inside. Sorry. <laughs> so I was just thinking. I, I, I think they were like they were aiming for like kind of like a cliffhanger sort of feeling mm. at the same time as hang having this kind of like emotional ending sort of feeling. Yeah. It's kind of like the two of them kind of jarred with each other a little. Yeah, bit. I think so because like, say, like it felt. Oh, sorry, you know. Yeah. Oh, um, the one thing I've been comparing it to a lot is like you compare the ending of this season to the ending of the last season, and like even just a lot of the individual episodes going on where like. The way we have an ending in Mando usually is like, okay, whatever the big conflict is for the episode is kind of wrapped up, kind of dealt mm. with. A couple other things as well. It's like we sort of like set up all these conflicts when we mm. sort of like just leave there in the middle of it all. And it's like, it, it felt like, like we, I, I was still like, I, I was like still waiting for like the actual end of the episode to happen. Mm. Like it sort of felt too much like we were leaving like just in the middle of a story. Yeah. And then like, but then it's, and the other thing of like the tease at the end for Book of Boba Fett, as much as that was amazing, I really liked that. Yeah. I'm like really, really hyped for that. It's sort of like, it felt kind of weird that like, it's like, all right, well, this is after the show. Everything, because yeah. Boba's here with his armor and he's with Fennec. And so like, okay, this is definitely after yeah, everything after. that's happened here. But like, all right, so we know that like Fennec got out of this sort of standoff fine, but like, well, what happened to everybody else you know? yeah exactly it's like, it's and like, i think i found yeah. it weird like amazing as it is i found it weird that the teaser came in the mandalorian 
because yeah. I think it's caused a lot of confusion because yeah. Especially on Tumblr, everyone was like, oh my god, season three's been cancelled, there's no season three, like season three's gonna be all about Boba, and I was like, guys, no! Yeah. <laughs> it's a completely different show! Because I saw that, yeah, it's like, um, I was confused about that as well, mm. at the time, and like, just from, from what they said, like, just like, having the December release date as well, and it's like, that's what oh, yeah. said, Mando's going to release in December next year, so mm. wait, wait, wait a minute, but then, um, yeah, but I saw it was like, some people were theorizing about it on Reddit, uh, they said that, all right, it's the previous like reports and leaks about the boba shows it's only going to be like four episodes or something yeah so not that well so they said looking at like when like all of the different um thursdays or fridays are in like december next year they would be able to like say it was december so it was like december the first or something Mm -hmm. when boba's on they'll be able to have all of that and then mando begins the week after while it's still december (laughs) <laughs> Alternatively, someone said, "How do we know that it is actually a mini series and not like a like it could just be like a movie on Disney Plus?" Oh, that's actually true. I like just like a, like a TV because movie I think everyone's been saying it's a TV show, but in all yeah. honesty, we don't know what it is. So yeah. all we know is that it's a limited run one-off mm. production for Disney Plus that's going to release before Mando season three. Yeah could be a film it could be no. yeah we, we i'd be happy know. with anything because it's barba yeah. <laughs> yeah it's either a mini series or a film by the way it's like yeah it's like um because yeah the, um and it also as well have the um thing of yeah going off of from when they had the investor call um yeah uh, last week and said how yeah they're announcing 10 new shows 10 new star wars shows coming to disney plus and they only announced nine of them exactly so, 10. so it's like yeah there is that and like and I feel like it's sort of um, we kind of like, yeah. It was just it's just, uh, it's like I I I'll 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 just use the simple term I often use to say like whether I you know it's like not making not not seem like I'm criticizing something too much mm-hmm. or like criticizing people's opinions or like like something. I was just say like, I just didn't really vibe with it as an ending. There's no, like, I I agree. Yeah. Especially going back, like especially like again, like I said it before, like of course I felt so happy with it. Like I felt so f- like overjoyed and stuff but from a writing perspective yeah like from a professional's perspective like from us reviewing it yeah. it could have been a little bit more tidy they could yeah. have gone for at least 10 more minutes at yeah, least easily. and cleared up just a few things and yeah. hinted at what maybe is coming because they've mm-hmm. left us with a lot of questions obviously which is great that's totally fine but <laughs> instead of just leaving us on the ship they could have taken us to navarro they could have taken yeah. us anywhere and been like okay they've come here and this is the next step for Dan. He's going to do this or whatever he's going to do. Yeah. And then dark side tease. And then that's it. it. We just need like, just like one little extra scene. Of, like, yeah. After, of like, I, I get they wanted to have like, sort of like the big emotional ending be Din parting ways of Grogu. Mm. But I feel like we just needed a little something just else. A little like, bit just, like, more. One last scene, just one little scene just to like kind yeah. of wrap up what's going on here. And like, because I, I was thinking, like, as as Luke was going to the thing, I thought what they were going to do is, like, okay, we're going to cut away, and then we're going to show, like, this is, like, about a day later, a few hours mm. later, we're going to have, like, a little a little scene. Of, I like, was sort of, I was hoping for that, too. Yeah, of, like, yeah, Gideon in, in cuffs or something with, like, sort of negotiations all, like, going on between Kara and Bo about, like, are mm. we going to turn him over to the New Republic? Are we going to execute him for, for crimes against Mandalore or whatever? They've got the ship in Dry Dock and they're like calling in some of the other Mandalorians to yeah. come in and like we then have like this little moment of like sort of Oh, that would have been think, fantastic. Yeah. Cause I think as well, I'm like I'm as I've been doing a lot this season, comparing it to season two of Rebels and say much mm-hmm. like season two of Rebels, we kind of end on this sort of like little bit of a kind of mystery box sort of situation. Of like with mm-hmm. that we ended with like, okay, is Ahsoka alive? Is she dead? That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but then like and that were like we had the sort of mystery box end, and then we saw like cut to a little bit later and just show like this little sort of, like montage yeah. of like just set set up setting up, like sort of waving off the season that's just gone and like sort and like and laying the threads. Like welcome, for, yeah, the laying the f- the foundations yeah. for the next one. And it's like I will. It's not that they didn't set a lot of stuff up for the next season. Oh yeah, like honestly they did. I think like it's the sort yeah, of thing did. that um, it's like. I, I was thinking about, yeah, but, but wait a minute, what's going to happen in the second season? I thought, well, you, you do actually, if you go back and, like, listen to, like, some of the dialogue, think about some of the different scenes through this episode, they do pretty much set up, I, f- I feel like they basically set up everything that's going to be mm. the plotline of the next season. I've, yeah, season three, I think they'll they'll pull the focus back to 
like being yeah to like, like being, Din's being story more of its own thing a little more yeah. especially with the other shows around and it's like but um but yeah I'm like uh, I'm also like I've like even though some of our predictions about um Camino and Snoke and so on <laughs> didn't like, come to pass in this episode at least it was like so like good to get like just a little bit of like additional information that yeah Dr Pershing is indeed a cloning engineer yes and, like they want and also Gideon's line about how he said the what the chi- the blood the child has he said this can bring I was gonna bring them up later but let's do it now reality. let's do yeah. it now so yeah. was that like an like just like a small like touch towards Palpatine because like definitely undoubtedly exactly because so, like, that's why I was to- like why yeah. is no one making a big deal about this yeah. like he technically yeah. just inadvertently said it so yeah. the child's blood <laughs> is going to restore order yeah order first or final first whatever, order. You, whatever, whatever <laughs> floats your boat it will restore order to the galaxy and it's like yeah that's all the confirmation i need i'm like also yeah just- like that's just like okay yeah snoke's coming because yeah. of grogu <laughs> it's also the and also that yeah even though it's, it's like he's already got the blood and it's like okay it's like i, I wonder well, yeah well, that could be a big plot point like so like, all right if, you're, if he's got the blood where is it is it on the ship i'm guessing exactly. it's on the ship somewhere dr pershing was like on his way to yeah. Gideon, so he doesn't have it but so then who has gideon, it it's giving does gideon have it like con- concealed in a flask on his person somewhere does uh-huh. that i imagine that's probably going to be a massive plot point like sort of oh definitely if they the... throw that away i'm gonna be upset yeah <laughs> i don't like, i don't think they yeah. will yeah. i hope not though <laughs> and like i was like i was actually anticipating early on i think like just imagine like the scene of like i was i thought it might happen at the end of last night's episode but it'll probably be a thing like in the next season or the season after just like imagine one point where like they're just going on Gideon and then just like out of hyperspace comes like one of the superstar destroyers you know like it's like if the the biggest like the empire uh, the biggest we've seen it like, so far in the show has just been like just this one little cruiser the Gideon's got but then like a proper star destroyer just comes along and like oh okay there's more of them oh definitely because yeah. like like I think like that's also what I think the image they're trying to give like that's yeah. all that Gideon had but I think yeah it's even bigger than that so yeah. I think, like, somehow he's going to escape or something's going to happen. Because I don't think he'll die until, like, oh, either the end yeah. of next season or the even if they have another season. He might die in the season after. Um, but, like, I feel like his, like, role is bigger in all of this. Especially with how he was talking, how much knowledge he had about Mandalorians and stuff, especially in this episode. Yeah. So I think he's going to be a really big annoyance next season. Because <laughs> there was, um, um, I thought the one... Th- theory of like what like the state of because like saying the empire it's like i'll, I'll just say i'm just gonna say gideon's faction for now because like mm-hmm. i'm sort of of the opinion there's probably like a bunch of different factions around at the moment but i'm thinking that one thing that sort of seems to stand out about his side of it is it's sort of like there's a lot of secrecy and there's a lot of like they're trying to they're trying to make sure that whatever scale of their forces exists is like is very little nobody knows how big that can be and like yeah. for instance the um uh the freighter captain in um the Eris, um oh, yeah. three, like just the fact that okay so we know that he was working with gideon he is part of gideon's faction but then like the fact that they have just like a full of like yeah if you get captured then like you know take a cyanide pill you know you're going yeah and just yeah it's like yeah, we want to make sure there is no communication between any, or as little communication between as many of these different groups as possible. Exactly. So that nobody can get an idea of how big our force is, how, yeah, where we're stationed, what we're doing. And even the fact that like, Gideon was going to kill himself this episode too, I was like, yeah, yeah. So that means that there's another guy who's in charge. Definitely, because, yeah. Definitely, like, yeah. But no, like, I, I hadn't even <laughs> thought about that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond anything else, it's like, yeah, there is like, there's someone else here. It's like Gideon's just one of many that are working oh, for yeah. somebody here, and so yeah, I'm really, really ex- I'm excited. I'm hoping that that's what we get to see explored. Yes. The next season. And if we again, we I know it never showed this like season, but like a volunteer. Yeah. Mm. Really want it. I'm yeah. gonna throw it up here because I've always I wanted to post it in case it ever like did yeah. come up. But Mitch made this. You'll see it now. He made this incredible piece of artwork of the volunteer. Um, he obviously kept saying that he wanted Andy Circus to come up in the show. Um, uh, and obviously 
because he plays Snoke. Um, but yeah, he made this incredible piece of art and just like we were all saying, like it would be really cool if he ever turned up. So if he does, I'm, sc- I'm excited. <laughs> Sorry, I yeah, I, I no, had go for it. That hadn't even occurred to me of the idea that yeah, if Gideon was going to like go the the um what's the word um uh but that's that phrase that means like it's like burn the oh so never mind if he Gideon was like was was like you know was willing to like kill himself to like sort of not be captured and not like sort of let yeah. any of the information get out about like how big the forces he's working for are and like I'm just thinking actually yeah yeah it's like he's captured and like. I'm guessing that like he's got the blood on him. Yeah. So that means that yeah, people are going to be coming after him, and like we're oh, going to yeah. get to see whoever he's working for is yes. going to be like coming after him. And so like, yeah, I just, yeah, like, like yeah. wonder who it is. Yeah. Because we a- thought Gideon was powerful, so yeah. How uh, powerful is the boss? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah, that 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 has to be like a shot in next season like one point. Oh, it's definitely. Like going, going on the ship, I am in the ship, he's like handcuffed and then we're just like out of hyper safe, you know, just like a massive ship comes along. Yeah, and it's like, oh and shit! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Run! <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, anything else we want to talk about? Um, well, I think there was a lot, but we start, we stopped on the Luke, Luke Skywalker thing, but we'll go qu- through it quickly. Um, the Dark Saber battle. Yes, that was brilliant. And How was- good was it? I'm still like, I, it's like, yeah, we, I mean, like, yeah, a lot of different theories, but I was like, lots of people I'd seen theorizing of like, all right, well, it's like, Chekhov's gun, Gideon, um, Gideon's got the dark saber, Gideon's yeah. got the the spear, they're gonna fight at some point, and we're gonna, and like, Pedro having trained in like spear combat for you know, um, um, yes! for, um, for Game of Thrones, it's like it's most likely gonna be him doing those stunts, and I was like, and so it's, I know there was lots of people theorizing like, is it? What if his helmet gets removed during the fight, and then like we saw, like probably get to have this scene where like you can like you can see it's Pedro like all the way through. It would have been so cool. And it's like I did like the I did like the way that like we had the how we had the like there was a helmet removal in the episode. I was thinking, yeah, yeah. it had to be. It's like yeah, but it's like um, I think um um yeah, that fight was brilliant. It was all, like a little short. I was like, oh yeah, like, but, but it was still great for. It. I think it was still well paced yeah. for what it was, and I feel yeah. like. I think I think yeah. we might get more battles like that in future. Maybe yeah. against Gideon and Din again. Yeah. Um, Gideon kind of let him win as well. I feel like that's I, I that's the thing. That's yeah. what I thought too. Especially yeah. after what he said, I was like, wait. Yeah, he let him win. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah, because like he's sort of he could try and he could defeat defeat um, Din and then have to deal with fighting Bo, who is a very accomplished and formidable fighter, mm-hmm. or like just Gideon being the manipulator. That he is just exactly. Like, yeah, I can just like I can just like direct you to to fight. Exactly, that's the thing. Him. Yeah, he's gonna be like the director of chaos and conflict next season. But the final part, which is I still get teary eyed talking about it, but the final goodbye yeah. between Dan and Grogu, it, I mean, yeah, it was just very emotional and just heartbreaking, but just so beautifully done, and just every detail about the goodbye was just so like nice for me and just like it's also another big moment for din because like we've seen him season one hated the kid just wanted to get rid of him and then even just like that moment where he's on the ship and he's thinking about going to save the kid and then he goes and saves him and then we see like that big character development stuff that happens and even just like it kind of ties into what happened last episode like you know he's got to do what he's got to do and he'll do it for the kid so just like him removing the helmet and showing his face to Grogu, it's just like, oh, oh this is a wholesome moment. I think so too. Yeah. And I think one more thing about it was like, and like, again, kind of ties into what I just said before, like Din didn't want the kid at first, but then yeah. he found it the hardest to let him go in this yeah. episode. Cause you can tell like he doesn't want to let him go, but then it's like, and it ties into like, again, like that whole thing with family. I said it in my reaction, just like, that's the whole thing of Star Wars. Like, it's parenting and just, like, the idea of family. And just, like, yeah, he he's lost everything now. Like, he he lost his family a long time ago. But, you know, it still hurts him to think about it. Um, and then he lost his home, which was the Razor Crest. And now he's lost Grogu. Mm. Um, so I, I hope we get to actually see that more, like, fleshed out a lot more next season. Because, again, like, I think, like, this season was, like, connecting it to the big points that is Star Wars. But I think next season 
hopefully delve into more about his story and his past and maybe just like um handling everything that happened with Grogu so because I, I feel like so. yeah def definitely it's something that like when we when the next season starts it's like we'll find we'll be, we'll be finding Din purposeless essentially exactly like, he's so like it's like he's um he's got um yeah no ship no he's like kind of basically retired as a bounty hunter it's like, yeah you know, might be going back to that eventually at some point but you know it's got no no kid no quest no ship kind of, no no <laughs> no rifle either yeah so it's like um and kind of um sort of like you know having like lost a little faith in his creed i guess to an extent yeah of like and so i reckon that'll be interesting of like seeing what they do of like okay what's his what's his quest now what's his goals what does he want what is he trying to do now you know what's yeah it, what's going to happen after that and but either way i think i yeah i reckon we'll see, we'll there's i'm very 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 intrigued to see what the next season is going to be like i think there's like brilliant potential for what they can do oh yeah i just want to say one more thing about the removal of the helmet thing yeah. um especially when grogu touched the helmet and didn't didn't removed it a lot of people are saying this but i i had to go and write it down because i couldn't remember the quote for the life of me but like just like just for once let me look on you with my own eyes yeah. like that just like it, yeah just like another parallel from like luke and anakin well mm. darth vader but like mm. you know like just like again like the father son thing is just like it's so beautiful and i think like just like that's the heart of what star wars is it's about like family and just like you know there can be misunderstandings that happen that lead to big wars but like at the heart of it it's just about family and just like that just made it more wholesome and just that was like one of my favorite moments of the episode so yeah i can't believe it's the final episode it's just like the seasons has flown by Oh no, this is the final one! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and for joining us for this second season of The Mandalorian. May the Force be with you and this is the way. This is the way. And Happy New Year. And Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Bye everyone.